I love it. Hey, it's Saturday night. Welcome to the Jonathan Ross Show. And wow, it was the X Factor's first live show tonight. Did you all enjoy it? Yeah. Who's your favourite? I love the one with the high pitched voice. You know, the, the drag act? I think his name is Johnny. <laughs> if he wins, you'll have to put that all behind him. Mind you, he's a drag act. He's probably used to putting everything behind him. <laughs> then there's Frankie. You know, Frankie? He has the name of all his female admirers tattooed on his backside. You must think that's probably like signing for a disappointing package, isn't it? <laughs> And talking of a massive pain in the ass, what's going on with Kitty? <laughs> She's saying that now. Give it a couple of weeks, eh? I'm going to vote for. I think. I think I will vote for Kitty, just so that for at least two hours every Saturday we can feel safe knowing exactly where she is. <laughs> oh, so you changed your mind already about her? <laughs> Have you been enjoying the sunshine? It's been hot, hasn't it? It's been so hot. It's been the hottest October on record. Even Jed would have been sleeping in separate beds. That's how hot it's been. <laughs> in China this week, a man bought his girlfriend a 500 pound necklace. This is a true story. And being romantic, he baked it into a small cake and gave it to her. Isn't that sweet? <laughs> Unfortunately, she wolfed it all down in one go. <laughs> she had to give a stool sample to the doctors. <laughs> they sent off examining. That's one envelope cash for gold weren't expected. <laughs> A man has written a book about having a nine-month affair with a dolphin. OK, this is a true story. Yeah, I know. I've heard of being dolphin-friendly, but that's going a bit too far. <laughs> He's been revealing details of his love affair. Flipper? No, only missionary, he said. <laughs> oh, I see we found the level there. <laughs> Have you all been watching and enjoying the Tory party conference? <laughs> Me neither. Uh, <laughs> Jodie Marsh this week revealed her new look after taking up bodybuilding. Check this out. Oh. Wow. Now, I know what you're thinking. How can I get a body like that? Well, <laughs> the secret is a strict diet of egg whites, protein shakes, and creosote. <laughs> you know, the weird thing, when I look at that picture, suddenly I really fancy some beef jerky. <laughs> Have you checked out what we've done to the set this week? Have a look at that. Look at that there. Let's put a bit of light on there. Uh, it's all done specifically for one of my guests. As I introduce them, you can use your skill and judgment to try and work out which one it might be. Um, but the set looks great, doesn't it? Do you like the way it looks? Yeah. It takes me right back. I haven't stayed in a travelodge for years. <laughs> so let's get to the guests. My first one is quite simply one of the most famous women in the world. It is, of course, Lady Gaga. <laughs> Good evening, lovely Lady Gaga. My next guest is perhaps the sole reason that most children now have a healthier, more balanced and, frankly, duller school dinner. <laughs> Mr Jamie Oliver. <laughs> hey, Jamie, how you doing? Hello, Jonathan. Nice to be here. Jamie has sold 100 million books. That's remarkable. That's not true. It is. Not, not you off the back of your van. Not like a, a pen. <laughs> Apparently in shops and stuff. That makes him the second best-selling British author after J.K. Rowling. That's and his right. recipes are better than hers. <laughs> All you get in her books, you get cheese Hufflepuffs, Lord Voldemort, <laughs> and Crumbledore. <laughs> Jamie Oliver, ladies and gentlemen, he's on the show. <laughs> also, my next guest is quite simply the most energetic man in show business. You'll know if you've seen him live, he works harder than Wayne Rooney's spell checker. <laughs> he works harder than Dappy's underpants. <laughs> he works harder than Tom Jones' Viagra. It is <laughs> Mr. Lee Evans. <laughs> I see. I see you've gone for the Gaga thing. Yeah, that's a nice look. I don't know if you've ever seen Lee on stage. He is like a 100 mile an hour ball of energy. And you should see the sweat he works up. He talks about it in his book, actually. Here's his uh, book, which is out now. And the amount of uh, sweat that he produces is incredible. I mean, oh, there's a, you see? <laughs> <laughs> Lee Evans is on the show, ladies and gentlemen. I'm a bit wet now. Uh, that's a great show right there. Um, should we get my first guest out? <laughs> there are many guests who we'd rebuild half the set for, but then again, not many of them are the fabulous Lady Gaga. <laughs> Fabulous. 
Nice to see you again. Oh, who, present. Who, you bought me a present? Yes. This is, this is Kevin. Kevin? Yes. Oh, oh and he speaks Kevin. as well. Are you all right, Kevin? Let's come on this way. Hey, Kevin. <laughs> Which way are we going? Where are you, are you coming through here? Yeah. Let's go around I don't here. know if it's your birthday, but that's your birthday present. Well, <laughs> Hi, everyone. Yeah. Here we go. I thought it would be a nice gift for you, you know, Yeah, well, it's, I, I can honestly say I've never been given one on a talk show before. <laughs> it's a male sheep. And your, the lead matches your, your outfit. You're in kind of a... <laughs> Uh, maybe we should send him home. What do you think? Okay, yes. Well, bye-bye, Kevin. Should we, t uh, should we take him home? Aww. Where's he going now? Bye-bye, yeah. Kevin. Bye-bye. Let's hear it for Kevin, the... Uh... <laughs> wow. It's fabulous to have you back here. Thank um, you. I just want to congratulate you on your beautiful new set. You like it here? I love it. Oh, you like? I know why you like it. You like it because it's full of high and stuff that comes with. Yeah. But you like all this, the stuff that we see Well, now I can load a bunch of crap on your stage. Oh, yes. Well, I think the sheep has already taken care of some of that for us. <laughs> uh, who, uh, who decides on this kind of thing? Because uh, I know the song you're doing this evening, and it isn't a farm-based song as such. So well, where, where does the idea for the hay and the straw come from? Well, um... I designed a stage, and this song is about a, a love affair with a man from Nebraska. In the, in the video um, and in the song, it's all about going back to um, his hometown to uh, get him back. And there's this uh, beautiful scene in a barn where everything sort of goes awry and is kind of twisted, and he's trying to fix me and change me. And as he's doing that, I break apart, and then he has to put me back together and put me in formaldehyde, and then I turn into a mermaid, and the whole thing just goes wrong. <laughs> A very, a, very, a very traditional story, then. Yes. A very, uh, OK, well, you know, um, we love your outfits. We love seeing what Lady Gaga's going to wear next, don't we? It's one of the big thrills about seeing your performance, seeing your new photograph. Um, this looks fantastic. The meat dress yes. was one of my favourites. Oh, thank was, you. It was shocking. It was memorable. It's in, uh, it's in a museum in, in New York right now, is that right? Um, it's in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. OK, it was in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. It is there now. No, it's not, because we asked and we got special vision to bring it over so we could have it on the show. No. Yeah, yeah, we have it in the green room no, right there. No, you have a fake one. No, no, it's there, you can see. There it is. That got is the not of... my meat that dress. That is your... <laughs> That's your meat dress. No, it's not. I made it myself, that is not it. Jamie! Get away from it! I can't walk. Don't walk, so it uh, OK. Lady Gaga is a phenomenal. You are a phenomenal success. You've sold, I don't know whether I've got the figures right, somewhere in the region it's over 70, maybe 80 million singles. Yes. 30 million albums worldwide. Yes. That's remarkable. And when you first started, a lot of people thought, okay, here's a girl wearing weird outfits and weird hats, and, and that's it. They kind well, of. Well, I still am that girl. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I think people have come to respect your talent now. Do you think that's the case? You, um, you... Well, you know. I hope so, and if they don't, that's okay too. You know, I just really am happy to make music, and I'm so pleased with the success of Born This Way. Uh, it's only been out for four months, and we've sold seven million copies wow. worldwide, so I'm really happy. Uh, but you sell seven million because everyone talks these days about records being pirated and illegally downloaded, and whether or not people can make money with records anymore, but you're still selling, you're still shifting, shifting albums. Well, yes, I still shift albums, you know, but at the same time, uh, you know, really touring is my passion. And how much money do these artists really need? <laughs> I always think that to myself when people go moaning about, about, oh, I can't make money off selling albums. It's like, how much money do you really want? What do you need that money for? Exactly. I mean, I've been doing shows for nothing for years now. <laughs> Uh, but when you're not in the spotlight, OK, say you have a long weekend off. You must have a, a weekend off occasionally. What do you do? What do you do to unwind? What do you do to have fun? Um, well, I drink a lot. Drink heavily. <laughs> and I write music. And recently I went surfing. You went surfing? Yes. Were you any good? Did you stay up on the board? I did. I stayed up on the board, although it was very difficult for me because I couldn't wear heels, and we all know how I feel about that. Yeah. Couldn't you have some sort of stuck onto the surfboard and just slip into them? Well, obviously, you've never been surfing before because you're <laughs> not in heels, no. Uh, let's talk about sex. In Am I right in thinking you, you like the ladies and the gentlemen? Yes. Okay. Uh, and are you seeing any ladies or gentlemen at the moment? Is there anyone special in your life? Well, you know, I don't talk about my love life. No, but, I don't. Um, I'm very happy. So you're happy, so you're seeing someone at the moment? I am happy. That's <laughs> when you're not seeing someone, uh, do, do you make the first move with people? Because I imagine it would be pretty intimidating 
you know, uh, you're, you're a wonderful person, I think you're a very sexy girl, but I'm someone else, there's the whole baggage that goes with being a superstar. Well, you know, I think that that is what is sexy, is when someone is unafraid to approach me. I find that to be very sexy. And, and are there lines that people use, are there regular lines, or is it just people come up and just, uh, you know, just I offer you I don't know, I'm not going to blow up everybody's spot on national television. Well, what would be the worst line someone's used? I really don't like when people contact my management. <laughs> For a date. No, it wasn't a date I was after. What I actually said <laughs> was... So people say, can, I, can we hook up? I mean, on... isn't that awful to get an email? Which should be available for dinner? I'm like, f*** off, no. <laughs> <laughs> They're mixing you up with some other no, kind of service. No, I'll be so. at home I'll, heating up a chunky soup, watching no. Will and Grace. No, thanks. Uh, I, I, hold on a second. What, Jamie? No, Jamie! Yeah, no, that's really just awful what you're doing back Jamie, there. that was a rare dress. You shouldn't be doing that. It's a beautiful thing. Salt, pepper, rosemary, a little bit of garlic. You better save some for me. I'm hungry. <laughs> You've got some. Don't do you, you worry. Do you like beef? I do. Is that his way of asking me out? Is he making me dinner? Yeah. Would you like to try some? Gar -gar. It's cooked perfectly. That's, a that's actually very old, that meat. Is no, it? no, this is beautiful. This is well hung. This is, um... <laughs> No, it's 21 day. You can't serve a lady up her own dress oh. as an appetite. No, look, look, look. I know, I know where that meat has been and you don't, so... <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. You eat it. Give, give, some, <laughs> give some of the leaves, see if he likes it. Have uh, a little try. That's called growler. Here we go. Here we go. When, oh. that, when they put... Who... <laughs> he didn't agree with him, Gaga. Uh, He's loving it. Um, so, uh, here's one thing that I was excited about. I like the fact that people are coming around to your talent over and above the Gaga experience, which is, is obviously a big part of it. But uh, I know this, uh, the duet you're doing with Tony Bennett now, a lot of people who I think previously might have thought Gaga's not for me, they hear this and they're going, who's that singer with him? That's incredible. And now there's, they're seeing you in a different, a different light. I'm sure that wasn't the intention, but that's, are you feeling that? You know, um, I don't have a tremendous um, uh, perspective on how people view me. I just... Um, generally haven't really collaborated with many of my contemporaries. But it's funny about Tony because I just shot um, a spread for Vanity Fair for America and uh, Annie Leibovitz shot it and she wanted me to be naked, of course. Oh. So um, why do photographers always, you know, I'm known as for my clothes, right? And then I get there and everyone just wants to be naked all the time. I don't understand. <laughs> so we, we got there and it's in Tony's studio. And uh, actually, Tony's an incredible artist. I mean, he just makes the most amazing, amazing work. And I walked in and she said, I want you to be naked. So I said, all right. And I just took my robe off and laid down. And poor Tony was standing there <laughs> looking at me like, oh, this effing girl. <laughs> Do you have a clip of the, of the Tony? We have a clip. I'm going to show do? a clip of you with Tony Bennett. It's, and it's so cute. I love him. But it's also, you, you can see, you're just getting on so well together. Have a look at this. She gets too hungry for dinner at eight. I'm starving. She loves the theater, but she never comes late. I never bother with people that I hate. That's why this chick is a tramp. <laughs> Lady Gaga with Tony Bennett. You've got a great voice. Thank you. Uh, I'll be chatting with Gaga some more after the break. Don't go away. <laughs> well, welcome back. I'm here with the fabulous Lady Gaga, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Looking exceptional, as we expect. Uh, this is a, a nice part of your life, I guess, is that you've become the godmother to Elton and David's little yes. baby boy, yes, Zachary. Yes, Zachary. Okay, that's a lovely thing. And so you knew them before you knew Elton for a while, I think, didn't you? Oh, yeah, for a while. And, um, gosh, Zachary's so beautiful. And I gave him a bath the other day. Elton or the baby? <laughs> the baby. Okay, that's a smaller tub. But it's so very sweet because, you know, you're giving... You know, Zachary, a bath, and he's so cute, and he's such, like, the most beautiful boy ever, and, and, um... Oh, yeah, they're so amazing. I and love then... how... Look, Elton John, that's the... You could not have a happier face on a man than I that. I know, he's so happy, but it's so funny, because you're, you know, I'm... I'm I, we had this sweet little boat that had, you know, you could pour water out of it to rinse all the soap off yeah, of yeah. Zachary, and as I'm pouring it, you know, Elton's singing, you know, Tiny Dancer or something, and I'm thinking, this kid has no clue. <laughs> <laughs> 
that his father is such a legend. And, uh, but, you know, the most beautiful thing to see, and for me, especially as someone that's such a gay rights activist in America, I could not see a happier family yeah. than I see in them. I mean, I've ne I, I truly have never seen a child have so much love in their life. It's so beautiful. And seeing little Zachary splashing around his bath, water on, look up, gaga. Did he say gaga to you? Because that would have... <laughs> I don't want to give away too much private well, information. Be great if you went, that would be great if, he, if his first words were, ga, ga, they go, he's got me. I will say that he's very spunky. He's very, very that, spunky. That means something slightly different over here. But, um, <laughs> uh, it does? Yeah. What did um, I just say? Doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> but did it, here's what I want to know, Gaga, did it make you feel at all broody? No. Oh. <laughs> I feel, I'm a maternal person, but I'm not, I'm not feeling the urge to be pregnant. Do you think you will fill the urge? Someday I will be, not now. Oh my gosh, the fans would kill me. <laughs> I really want to make, like, at least ten more albums before I do something well, like that, that. Well, I would welcome that. I'm already working on the next one. How much have you written? How far are you? How far? Well, um, I'm, you know, I, I work very organically, and so I'll, when I'm done, I'm, I just know I'm done. I just say I'm done. Gaga, gaga. Can we have one of the titles of the new songs? Nope. What? Absolutely not. But Why not? I do have some information about my next video. Never mind that. Give us one of the song titles. No. Come on, just share a little. Take your shirt off. If you really insist, I will do. <laughs> you really wouldn't want to see it. If you take your shirt off, like all the way off, I will give you a new song Hold title. On. Hold on. Seems that somebody has met his match. Okay, I'm not going to take it off because uh, I've got four nipples. Um, <laughs> we're going to hear Lady Gaga think she's going to get changed. You got a different outfit for us? I well, of course I do. Of course you do. I you just wanted it? to thank you. It's very sweet everything that you've said and um, to recognise the evolution in me as a songwriter and as an artist and singer. I appreciate it, Jonathan. And I thank you to like, everyone. You know, in the I UK. love your stuff and it's, uh, it's very kind of you to say that. Let's get your Lady Gaga, ladies and gentlemen. She'll be back later on. Thank you, Lady Gaga, the fabulous, phenomenal Lady Gaga. Oh. You gotta love a bit of Gaga. She's great, isn't she? I wish, I wish she would stop flirting with me because it's so inappropriate. Uh, a Russian man has revealed he saves money on razors by using everyday household objects. We haven't made this up. There he is. That's how he shaves. Okay, he shaves using a sharpened spade. How primitive is that? That's ridiculous. Doesn't he know that you can now get one of these? It's a spade with three edges for a closer, smoother shave. Uh, let's get my next guest out, ladies and gentlemen. The great thing about him is that he's always learning. He recently learned, for example, that Americans will kill you if you try and take their pizza away. It is, of course, Jamie Oliver. Jamie Oliver, ladies and gentlemen. You've got to... How are you? I've got to apologise for this. This is a... We, we've sort of... We've been gargard up here, so you're sitting on a, a hay bale. She's lovely, isn't it? She's great, isn't she? Nice. Uh, I was hoping you'd come out with a duck or something like that. We'd continue the kind of animal There's theme. a lamb out there. I thought I'd have a go on that one. Have a little <laughs> wide on it, maybe. Uh, it's good to see you here. How did the dress taste out there? Was it good? I loved it. A little bit of salt, pepper, olive oil, garlic. Bish, bash, bosh. Lemon. Slice it up. Yep, yep, yep. Delish. Uh, congratulations, Renaud. I think there's been a power shift in the uh, household, haven't there? You've got a, a little boy. You've now got a I boy. Have a little there. buddy. Yeah. Lovely, How lovely is that? Lovely little boy. Uh, I had this interview question. Were you trying for a boy or did you not mind? You were... I, honestly, I, I, I was just happy to try. Um, I, 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 <laughs> uh, everyone kept saying, oh, you know, he wants a boy, he wants a boy. I was happy whatever I got. And um, when he came along, it, I was in shock for three months. There he is. I just didn't know what to do with his bits. I thought, what do I do with that? Oh, because of course it's very different when you're changing nappies and bathing. Yeah. It's very, it's very, and it, it operates in a whole different way. Of course it does. It, it? It's like a hose. Have you been sprayed in the face yet? <laughs> yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. But it's a lovely thing, isn't it? Oh, it, you know what? He's just completed the family. He's very chilled, very calm. The girls are very emotional. So Buddy's just like he's like proper geezer, just chilled. 
And nice. how, how old is he now? At one last week. Wow, that's so lovely. Yeah, what walk in and everything. Uh, and, and at home now, how are the girls with you uh, in terms of having a famous dad? Are they, do they like the idea that Jamie... Because they're getting to the age now where I guess they're yeah. more aware well, of Well, I'm it. sure you've had it. Yeah, they're starting to be aware of the magazines and stuff like that and the paparazzi and, and all that sort of stuff. And um, they're quite cool with it. I mean, I think... I, I feel so, a little bit sorry for them because, like, some people like me and some people don't. So, uh, Most they, people like you, don't they? It's not like I you don't... I think so. Well, you yeah. know... Not that many dinner ladies, but, um, you know, <laughs> uh, no, no, it's, it's OK so far. And do you go to school? Do you, uh, are you allowed to show off your skills? Do they take you in and say, my dad can cook? And... Uh, fun funnily enough, um, the other day, Poppy came home with um, some homework, and it was the history of bread. Well, what kind um, of school are they learning the history of mate, bread? It's a you... lovely school. And, and I said, bread, I think you better come to me. Two hours. I kept up till 9.30. Oh. Like, <laughs> she's like, she's like, yeah. Wake up, wake up. Anyway, we did this great project. Um, <laughs> Hold on. Uh, you can't help her with the project. That's mate, honestly, Can you, Jamie, help her with the bread? I bread? rattled it out. I, I even started sticking <laughs> paper together with, like, flour and water to make glue and all that. It was brilliant. And then, um, and then I sent Poppy to school. Um, said, like, what, do you want me to do a bread demonstration? And my, my lovely wife goes in and she said they had a new teacher. She goes, um, I don't know if you want this, but my husband, he's... He's not a bad cook. Um, <laughs> do you want him to do a bread demonstration? She goes, oh, I know who your husband is, Mrs Oliver. Uh, yeah, we'll have him in. So I did a, I did a, little, <laughs> I did a little demonstration and it was lovely. Uh, we're going to take a break. So we'll be Jamie Oliver when we come back. Don't go away. <laughs> Extremely handsome and talented Mr. Jamie Oliver is still with me. Uh, Jamie's got a new book out. When do you not have a new book out? You, how many have you bought out now? Oh, once a year for the last 15 years. It's a good thing. Jamie's Great Britain is here. Over 130 reasons to love our food. So this is all British food or...? British, or... British inspired. British yeah. inspired. What does that mean, this? It's not well, I mean, the, the in the series and the book, the journey, it was... Uh, I wrote the book over about a year and a half, did the, sh the show over about six to eight months. And uh, I was basically going around Britain in my mobile pub, the Cook Insider, and then basically, you know, uh, <laughs> what we were doing was... So, hold it, we got a picture of this, uh, this pub, OK? There's the pub. So that's actually that's a mobile... One... Yeah, that's a pub. There's a pub that, in if there. You know, that's an old army truck. I bought that from the Army Reclaim. On the top of the, the, the cab is my wood oven, as you do. OK. So instead, that's the machine gun turret. So you can cook oven. and you can do... And uh... then inside is barrels, a wood oven, table for 14 people. If you all want to have a little drink up tonight, come back to mine, we'll sort you out. You say that. Imagine if everyone followed you out of here. What would you do? Oh, no, I took it to a festival the other day and it got absolutely mobbed. And I, I was cornered in there just making pizzas and cooking chips. Uh, uh, and the name you called it again is... The Cock Insider. The Cock Insider. So that's a recipe that you enjoy. Well, we got a proper pub sign made. Yeah. We, we went to a proper pub sign made. And what's on the side? Uh, and no, a little email came back the next time. Are you sure you want to put that? <laughs> yeah, I want a proud cock in a, in, in a barrel with apples everywhere and lovely cider all over the place. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Um, okay, so uh, in the, you said it's British or British inspired. So what stuff did you find out that wasn't? You, I guess oh, you thought so you'd much. find lots of British food that was uh, uniquely ours, but most of it we, we've borrowed from all over the world, haven't we? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I really wanted to tell not the obvious side of Britain. And I just thought, for me personally, food was a brilliant way to get around the country, meet different groups of people. And what I tried to do was basically, you know, go and find the classics, like, say, fish and chips, and yeah. actually say, like, fish and chips, British, classic meal. That has to be British. No, it's not. It's Portuguese Jewish. Don't be ridiculous. Honestly, it's Jewish Portuguese, a couple of hundred years ago. And, and like, all of those, whether it's pies... So how do, you, how do you establish that's the case, then? Well, historians. You know, we were working with historians, doing a lot of research, going around the country. You know, even, like, the great British pie. You know, that, that came from Egypt, through Greece, through uh, Rome, from the Romans to us. And you start to realise that actually, for the old Anglo-Saxons, a, a lot of our kind of introduction with these new waves of immigration, whoever they were, was always their food, you know. So, yeah. for me, it was wicked. I loved it. When you travel around, do you still get grief from... Uh, remember when you were doing the school dinner thing? I know a lot of people, a lot of parents didn't like what you were saying for In start. In school dinners, yeah. Do they still give you any grief, or is it kind of that's blown over now? Do they see sense now? No, no, it's good. Good now. Parents are good. Uh, we're about six years up the road, I think it's probably fair to say that standards across the board have gone up. Um, probably about 50% of the schools uh, are a lot better, yeah. and about 50% of the schools are struggling because they haven't had the training or the extra equipment and stuff like that, uh, which is very frustrating. Do you allow your kids to have, like, you know, like, uh, like, like sweets in their lunchbox and stuff like that ever? Do you, do you uh, give them, any, like, as a treat, would you give them... Not them? really. I mean, if they want an ice cream or something, we'll give them one. So you're not, like, you're not really so hard on them in that respect, but at the same time, you just try and make sure I, you... I think it's fair to say, if you're really honest, that, like, portion sizes for kids has gone crazy. 
You know, if you look at what they give a kid at a fairground, it's like three scoops of ice cream. They don't need it. Yeah. You know, yeah. and that's why we've got problems. You know, and, and so I think, you know, Mrs. is pretty good on it. She's much better than me, actually. I go on and have it. Um, but, you know, I think, I think the moral of the story is, you know, if, if you can go... F the, the problems in Britain with health is, isn't from, like, the odd treat. Oh, I've had one too many. Yeah. The problem is having crap every day. Yeah. The point I'm making is when, when does feeding your kid a life of crap become physical abuse? I see what you're saying. Um, you're saying you've got a responsibility. Yeah. And you care very passionately about it. Sometimes this isn't some, you know, some people thought, oh, maybe it's just a crusade for the sake of it's a good TV idea, but you care very much about it. I mean, you'll see me doing it to the end of my days, I swear to God. And, and I think, like, where I am personally right now um, is I sadly have lost all hope in the government proactively saving our kids. Yeah. And I really mean that. Uh, and you've spoken that, to and them, we you've, shouldn't clap about that, because that's but you've really spoken to, You spoke to people in the Labour administration, you've spoken, I yeah, guess, to the Conservatives they, they now? They don't, they don't... They say they care, but you have to put your hand in your... You have to, you have to top-load investment now to fix the problem. It's got to be a ten-year plan, and the problem with democracy, instead of communist regimes, you know, is basically that they vote every four years, and you've got to make new... I've, I've met six education secretaries, and I've had enough of it. I'm bored. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's... Well, I've got plans, but I'll give you that another time. You know, I do love your cookbooks, and I love seeing you on TV as well, uh, and I enjoyed your efforts in America as well. They didn't take kindly to you. I guess, uh, I guess there was the same kind of entrenched belief that mm. they knew best anyway, and at the same time as well, you're an outsider coming in and telling Big them how time. to run yeah, their yeah, things. Yeah. Have you made any leeway there at all? Uh, do, do you know what? The, the, the last two seasons of Food Revolution on ABC has been amazing. Uh, real strange one for me, because ABC's sort of like ITV's and primetime show. In Britain, we have a culture of documentaries, exposés, dispatches, you know, panorama, yeah, yeah. No, nothing. Our show's the only one ever in American history to stir the pot. So you've got to imagine what they think of me. I mean, so they... They think you're a troublemaker. Always in the beginning, and I've sort of felt it and seen it all these times before, so I know it's going to turn at some point, but I didn't expect it to be two months. Yeah. And, um, but you have to be very... Like, for instance, there was one time when we went to sort of... Ev most of the kids in LA get a free school lunch because there's a lot of poverty there, which you probably would never expect. I've been in parts of LA where you can see the Hollywood sign and there's 80% childhood obesity, where there's not clean water going into the schools. Uh, and, and, and poor families, really poor families, have to, have to bring the most expensive way of hydrating, which is bulk water yeah, yeah. From, from the corner Ridiculous, shop. Yeah. And, you know, um, they get, to get a free school lunch, you have to get milk for your breakfast and lunch. So they're getting two bottles a day. And there's more sugar per 100 grams than a can of Coke, you know. So from so the age not, of 4 to 18, not, yeah. they're sitting there scratching, going, why have they all got diabetes? Why have they got no teeth, milk teeth? Wow. So, like, the way I combat that in the show, I went and bought a second-hand American, uh, you know, school bus, cut the lid off, and put the amount of added sugar per week in just L.A. alone, which was, I think it was 57 tonnes of sugar. Jesus. So that's the point. The point is the world's gone mad. Yeah. And every now and again, um, you've got to just bring it back in and... And you've got to shout about it. You've got to let, get, yeah. give people the information. And also, the funny thing is, it's not me. I was never like this. Yeah. It's not... I, I... This is what I find intriguing about you, is because your background would suggest someone who, you know, you're not a geezer. That's a bit, you know, sort of like a bit dismissive. Essex. But yeah, you're an Essex guy and you kind of got into cooking kind of by mistake, I guess. You just found that you had an affinity for it. It and was then, true. And in TV, you fell into by mistake. No, the, the, the sequence of events that got me onto TV were incredible. I mean, I was never supposed to be working the night they had the film crew there. There was someone else misbehaving with a young lady in another place, and I covered him, and we had a busy night. And I came in on a night I shouldn't have been there. And everything that I've done, ev everything, comes back to, to the, the lack of control of one man's penis. <laughs> it's so true. It's so true. Do but, you think he's sitting at home now with his girlfriend saying, that could be me up there, you no, know, if I'm, I'm not, really there. Yeah, well, I, I'm, I, I, you know, I don't want to cross the line, but yeah. <laughs> Now let's have a quick look. I just want to show one thing here because uh, you know you made it when you appear in either The Simpsons or South Park. Uh, Lady Gaga is appearing in The Simpsons soon, but here we have you in uh, South Park. I don't even seen it, and uh, I think it shows uh, the impact you have had in America is that they're using you in this way. This is Jamie in South Park. A culinary battle royale is set to explode here in a school cafeteria. Will it be the simple rustic cafeteria food of the challenger, or will the Iron Chef reign supreme? Hey, no, no, all you people get out of here. Hold on, wait. School cafeteria food needs to be healthy. <laughs> Why won't people listen to me? Jamie Oliver! These kids have now been waiting over 12 hours for their lunch. Over at the prep station, Jamie Oliver is crying again. Kids' food should be healthy. <laughs> Why are you getting healthy? <laughs> A meddlesome crybaby, that's what they're yeah. showing you to be.
Uh, it's lovely to have you show. I've spoken to you a few times before, and always uh, I come away just really feeling your passion and being somewhat inspired as well. Um, it's you know I don't know where it came from, but, I, but no, I'm no, glad I. you've got it. <laughs> Jamie Oliver, ladies and gentlemen. It's, it's genuinely inspiring when you hear him talk, isn't it? Yeah. And then he's back there force feeding his kids Mars bars. <laughs> uh, now, Lee Evans was keen to make a spectacular entrance on the show. A couple of weeks ago, we had a Hugh Jackman fired out of a cannon. Uh, last week, uh, Ewan McGregor jumped over the other guests and we said, Lee, there's no really need. You don't have to do this. He said, No, I insist. I want to do something big. I want to bungee jump onto your show tonight. So, with that in mind, Lee, how are you feeling up there? Yeah, absolutely fantastic. You're yeah, good. I've got cauliflower tabs. I'm fine. Absolutely great. Are you ready to go? Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, will yeah. You, will you count him down for me, ladies and gentlemen? Here we go. Three, Three two, two, one. one. Oh, whoa, hold on. Okay, Lee. How's that? Okay. You all right? Okay. Oh. Get you down, man. Should we get you down? I don't think. Get, Jonathan, get what you. <laughs> You okay? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I've got gotcha. you. I've got gotcha. you. Okay. We need to get you stable and Put get you unhooked. Seat. Put us on the seat. Put us on the seat. I don't know if I can get you. Get us on the seat, Jonathan. There's not, there's not many places for me to get a good grip on you. <laughs> I've got it. I've got it. Right. Get something. Oh my Jesus! <laughs> He's down. We'll take a break. I'll get Lee out of the harness. <laughs> wow. Well, well. Are you okay? Are you all right? Because I was. That was a. Uh, it wasn't quite as smooth as we'd intended. It I'm to getting an e fever. How do you sit on the edge? Of, how do you? How do you? What do you? How do you sit on the edge of this desk? <laughs> how do you sit? How do you sit on the edge of your desk there, John? I'm getting a fever here. What I've, I've got a chair. I don't need to. Yeah, look, that's, uh, that's the Wurzels are back on tour again. The, uh, if you've ever seen Lee live, you know this is uh, this oh. is the energy you get there. You're about halfway through your toy, is that why? Right? Yeah. How are you holding up? Because I know you throw yourself into it, and I know that it must take its toll on you. Your knees and your feet and your back and everything. Does that go? Uh, yeah, yeah. My knees start to go after a while, but then I walk on stage and I'm all right. Everything's fine. You know, no, everything's really good. No, I feel all right. I'm, I'm really good. Don't I look good? What was the matter with me? Uh, no, no. <laughs> you, you look fine. I just know I've seen you live, and it's a remarkable thing. And the amount of energy you put in, I just think, how does he keep going? Because you know, none of us are getting any. <laughs> <laughs> Over the counter. Yeah. Over the counter in yeah, boots. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, the the tour. I just found this out. <laughs> I just found out the tour. This is uh, they're, they're filming it as they always do on big tours. for DVD. This is, uh, correct, I believe, this is the first time a comedy tour has been filmed in 3D. In, fr in 3D, in we did it. In 3D, that's in quite 3D, something. In 3D, you're gonna, I'm going to be in your lounge. So I don't know whether I want you jumping out your TV into my lounge like that, because you're... Well, I say 3D, I mean, it's the net flat next door 3D. OK. You know, I'm in 3C. <laughs> <laughs> you be in 3D. Uh, Lee Evans' book is The Life of Oxfam's Lee. Covered uh, in glue. This oh, is uh, Lee's book is out right now, and it's Lee's story, and it's a great story. It's a great story. This I only know, goes I... up to the age of 18, though. You're gonna, presumably, you're going to carry on after that. Uh, yeah, of course I am. Yeah, okay. yeah. I hope, well, I hope so. It depends yeah. on that, how this one goes, uh, actually. Yeah, there's loads so. I didn't know about you in that. I mean, I knew that you had a sporty background. I didn't know you, you were a boxer for a while. You weren't a bad boxer, were you? No, I was really good. I always came up second. Uh, okay. <laughs> Third, if there was a ref. <laughs> But yeah. your dad wasn't a boxer because he was in show well, business. Well, he was a boxer in the army when we so were he, younger. Yeah, yeah. When he was a kid. Yeah. And then when I was born and all that, we were living in a doctor's surgery, is where we were. That was our living room. And, uh, you know, people come in with flu and colds and all that sort of stuff because my dad was working over the docks at the time. And then he got into show business a bit later, you know, in the, in the, in the sort of uh, late 60s, late 70s. Late 60s, 70s. And yeah. he was a singer and he played instruments. Oh, it's amazing. amazing. So did you musician. go to tour with him? Did you, did you, did you, we is that toured you got all your the time. Of? That's what we did. I mean, that's uh, kind of roughly what the book is about touring around, uh, like, 
like the working men's clubs, Manchester, Newcastle, Sheffield, uh, Birmingham and Liverpool. And, they and must be, that must have been pretty different to you now touring and well, doing the old tour. Well, you've got to be on your guard. I mean, my mum, was, she's a very witty woman, my mum. And um, I remember sat, sat in a club, this really rough club with my mum all night. I mean, Dad used to do this impression of John Lennon. You know, and he was singing this song, I imagine there's no heaven, all this. And there's a bloke saying, he, he shouted out, he went, he went, that's not like John Lennon. And my mum went, hey, hey, stuff, shut your mouth like that. And this bloke went, who do you think you are? She went, Yoko Ono, and they piss off, you know. <laughs> Witty woman, you know, yeah, yeah. you know. Well, she was looking out for your dad as well. Well, yeah, I mean, when we was kids, we had nothing. It was on this sort of council estate. We had nothing. Like, on rent day, um, we had to hide from the rent man. So when the rent man knocked on the window, like, you know, like, my brother was like a... He was a locker coffee table. <laughs> you know, I, mean, like, I was a lamp, do you know what I mean? <laughs> my dad suddenly got down on the floor. He was like the carpet. <laughs> You know, I mean, that was what we did on, on sort of rent day, you know, from the rent man. But your dad, this is what I like about the book, he comes across as a real character. I mean, some of the stories about him, you know, like... Oh, uh, he's fantastic. What's he's the, such a, a great... Uh, are they, are they all a, true stories? I all guess true you... stories. I mean, like, um, I mean, because in those days, the, cl the clubs were so rough, you know. And we, uh, there was a, a, a particular place up in Liverpool. I'm not sure if it was called the Shakespeare Club, but... I remember one night, this bloke had won the pools, <laughs> and he bought this really crap suit, it was like a yellow tartan suit, and he sat in the table with all his mates, he thought he'd treat all his mates, you know, but he kept echoing me dad. And you, in those days, you had like a three-piece backing group, it was like piano, bass and drums, but the bass player on this particular night was huge, I mean, he was like, sh like this kind of fella, <laughs> yeah. you know. And this bloke wouldn't stop heckling me dad, and then right at the end of me dad's act, he thought, right, I'm going to have a go at this bloke, I'm going anyway. So he said, he, and the bloke went, make me laugh, and me dad said, well, let's borrow your suit, you know. So this, that really set this bloke off. <laughs> and we're all sat in the dressing room, there's me, me mum and me brother all sort of sat there. I'm only like, you know, f uh, about five, six, sort of sat there. But in the corner is this small mousy woman, just sat there all like this, like really sort of quiet mousy woman like this. So we're all, we're all in the dressing room waiting for Dad, I can hear all this commotion, this bloke's going nuts. And me Dad comes in the dressing room, right, <laughs> right, he comes in and he slams the door and he goes, I think there's going to be trouble here, I think there's going to be trouble. And we all went, oh no, you know, and, he, and, and there was a knock on the door. Like that, and my dad went, it's that bloke, it's the bloke from the audience, right? So he said, when that door opens, I'm going to lamp him one. Yeah. Right? So the door opened, and he went like that, and the bloke went straight past him, walked over to the small mousy woman, sat in the corner, and went, you're a slag. You're a slag and a slut, and you're an ugly whore. Like that, right? And he walked over to my dad, and he went, right, I've had a go at your wife. What do you reckon about that? And my dad went, well, it's not my wife. <laughs> And then this big bass player, this big bass player, arrived at the door and he went, well, whose wife is he? He went, is. <laughs> Fantastic. So there's all sorts of stories like that in the book when we were kids going around the clubs and all that sort of stuff. So how did you stumble into comedy then? Because he wasn't a... He I wasn't stumbled a... into it. I was, um, you know, in our family, there's always been musicians in our family. My dad always plays loads of instruments, like, you know, he plays clarinet and sax and, and, uh, and piano and drums and all this. And you just pick it up, you know. I spent loads of time as a kid hanging around musicians and stuff like that. So um, I knew I could play a bit of piano and guitar. And uh, my main trick was to, um, when I played the guitar, I did know how to do this, uh, slip the strap up to my neck. And, and do this, and it right. would go round, round here. You know, that was my yeah. main kind of... So you knew you'd get a laugh with that. Yeah, yeah. I, I knew I'd get a laugh with that. But I, knew, I, I wanted to be a serious musician. Uh, and, but every time I tried to do it, it all, everything just went wrong. But it just started to get laughs. And uh, so I did my big neck routine, and that was really, <laughs> really, really well. Are you all right? Is everybody all right? <laughs> Are you with us? Yeah. Great. Do you still do the neck routine? You don't still do that, ever, do you? <laughs> What? The neck routine? Yeah, you don't still do that? No. No, I don't, I don't even do that now, no. Okay. Um, so it must be... It must seem strange, though, to be playing these big venues now after that kind of... Kind isn't that of... Weird? That's weird, isn't it? It's coming at me. It's like I'm travelling through loads of ice. You feel like Doctor Who? I do. You'd make a very good Doctor Who. There's Jamie, look, and he's lovely. You love to get a laugh, don't you? Oh, yeah, I, I like to enjoy it. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. really good so fun. You, so you actually, you do stop some, when you're doing, a lot of people are doing gigs and obviously they're committed and they're going to do the best job they can. You actually still love being on stage, don't you? You love being in front of a crowd. <sighs> Well, it's kind of where I find a, a safe place. Because in the real world, I'm not really much cop. You're not very comfortable, are you, in, in like social situations and no. things like that? No, you, I mean, I, I've been to, um, you know, weddings and stuff like that. I, I'm, yeah. no, I'm sort of say the wrong thing. I was in a car wheelie once. I'd been, I'd been doing a photo shoot and it was, uh, we were sharing a car with the town. It was me and Jack D and 
Lee Evans, and you were really nervy in the car, oh, and yeah. even and you couldn't stand being in the car with us. And I don't think it was just because it was us. I, I think well, you got nervous, and you, you <laughs> <laughs> and you got out early before you said, "I'm going to get out here. I'm going to get out here." Yeah. And then you got there, and then you started kind of almost performing in the street for people. Yeah, I know. It was the weirdest <laughs> thing I've seen in my life. Yeah. I didn't think there was any need for you to put a pie out and start collecting money, though. That was out of the <laughs> well, 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 love you, that Yeah, guy. some bloke went, I love your monkey. But so you feel, <laughs> so you feel comfortable doing that. So this is something where you feel, OK, I know, I know that our relationship, this is, what, this is the level it's on. You're yeah. laughing, I'm being funny, and I can relax. Yeah, no, I, I really enjoy it. I do enjoy it. I mean, I don't enjoy the before and the after. I don't like the nerves. So I get, get very and nervous. do you get nervous Yeah, still? man, I'm like, pacing up and down before but I'm amazed, a gig. You, you must know you can do it by now. No, it comes from the old days, just dying on my ass every night. Did you die? You didn't die that often, did yeah, you? Yeah, man, every day. Did you? Yeah. You know, I don't know how I got away with it. I mean, I was doing really crap gigs, like four people in the audience dying on me arse. Yeah. I was beat up, shat at, spat at, chucked out, my car stolen. <laughs> you know, just for a laugh, to wow, steal his on. car. That must be a bad gig if they decide to steal your car. They you tried to steal so my so car, <laughs> right? It was over, I can't remember, I'm not sure if it was an over in uh, South Wales. And they, but they, it was an old Chevette I paid uh, 20 quid for. Uh, and they tried to steal it, and they're all pushing it away, but it's the, the steering lock's on, so they came back. <laughs> <laughs> this was the audience or just people in the street? People in the audience. It's so crap, they're stealing his car and they're going, they went, hey, oh, oh. <laughs> Okay. Uh, we're going uh, to have to wrap up the interview, Mick, because we've got a great performance coming up. Oh, and yes, you're going to yes, see. Yeah, uh, I'm looking forward but to this. Be before you, do, you know, one of the things I love about the book is how lovely the way it is you write about your wife and uh, about Heather. Yeah. Uh, the love she gives you, the support she gives you, you write about it. Uh, you rarely see someone talk about their partners in that kind of way. And, that, and it really is, it, it's very touching. Were you, you were comfortable about sharing that part of yourself? I with can't them? stand the woman. <laughs> I can't wait until she, I wish she'd just leave. <laughs> no, of course I love her very much, you know. She doesn't understand me because she's Chinese. <laughs> no, she, no, she is my, if, with, without my wife, she, I'm not me, basically. Yeah. No, 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 I don't mean it like that. I mean, really, I mean, I'm not me without my wife. But look at me, I'm, a tw I'm an idiot. Look. <laughs> and she is my, my, my cock, my rock. My, she's my rock. How old were you when you got married? 18. We've been married now for 28 years. You know, and it's just unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah! <laughs> you see all the blokes going blind, we believe. <laughs> we were setting the bar high for the rest of us. We were going to have to go and say, I love you so much. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, no, I think she's absolutely fantastic. Lee is a, a charming man, a very funny man. The book's very funny. If you get the chance to see Lee live, you really should grab it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mr. Lee Evans, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Tony. I love you so much. Sit down, relax. Sit down, relax. We're going to see the, the big show. Thanks to all my guests, of course, uh, Jamie Oliver, Lee Evans is still out here, and coming out in a minute, we've got the fabulous Lady Gaga. Join me on the program next week if you can. My guest will be David Williams, uh, star of... <laughs> Start of Superbad and Knocked Up, Seth Rogen and Michael Bublé will be here. Plus, well, there's a Bublé fan right there. Plus, we have music from Coldplay. But now, <laughs> performing you and I, it is the fabulous <laughs> Lady Gaga.
Six whole years. Put your dreams up. For Nebraska, it's John. communing with my breast. And you have a teeny tiny erection. 